Ah, uh, long, rambling, poorly structured house cleaning schedule update at video. Blah. If you want the TLDR version up front, it's that I'm going to remove one of the slots from my schedule, but none of the playthroughs are canceled. It's just going to happen when one of them's over. But also there's going to be some rolling blackouts. So if a particular episode of a particular game just doesn't come out that day, then that's just it. You could learn the structure to it by watching this video, but if you don't want to bother learning the structure to it, then just expect that sometimes certain videos just won't go up sometimes in the near future. And, you know, just watch the videos when they come out and don't be like, where is the today's video of this? Because it's like, I, I made a video to explain that. You didn't watch it. Anyway, goodbye, people that want the TLDR version. Uh, long version, the part about like, oh, what's life like and all the other stuff and everything. Uh, so let's talk about my, my, my schedule, my structure, my thing. So once upon a time, I made one billion videos per day, and I was a mad scramble of like, ah, this new release came out, and this new release came out, and struggle, 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 scary, scary, scary. Uh, if you want a little bit of an update of that, and, and the deep dive of that, uh, go watch, uh, what episode was that? It was the Patreon Q&A where that's the open to you guys, so you guys don't have to be a Patreon subscriber to watch it, where I go do the deep dive of stats and everything. I think that was episode 55. Yeah, it would have been episode 55, part two, because I, 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 I split 55 into two parts because it was so long, where I go into my YouTube analytics and stuff. I kind of I just, just discuss my history there. But the short version is that I used to be very aggressively trying to grow the channel by playing new releases as soon as they came out, and it clearly worked to some extent, but it's not sustainable because I had... I, because normally when people aggressively just play every new release, they uh, abandon them 10 to 20 episodes in, or even 5 episodes in, and they're just like, dipping in and getting that those sweet part 1 views. But me, being a lunatic, was always trying to finish games, so... Uh, I either ha I was uploading like 10 videos a day or at times like I had these staggered schedules where like it'd be like if it took it to uh, the current schedule, it'd be like if Judgment and Monster Hunter were both going up on the same time slot, but on alternating days, like stuff like Odin Sphere, Life Through Seer and Tokyo Mirage Sessions had to deal with being like every other day videos in com competition with each other because I just started too many games. So I've I, at some point. I was like, you know what? I'm Patreon supported. Let's just be sane about this. By the way, this this should be this should say Sojourn. This is an out of date picture because I haven't made a new schedule since then. My bad. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> so I tried to make a sane thing. I'm like, okay, whatever. Six slots per day. That's going to be the hard lock. And when when new vid when new games come out that uh, like you know like stuff like Link's Awakening and Control and and Monster Hunter World or whatever like. When new games come out, it's too bad. I'm not going to play them on release day. I'll play them when I get around to them because my priority is to finish the games that I start and not abandon them, but also not let the thing happen where I was staggering my schedule into weird alternating checkerboard days. So I don't want that to happen either. So that's, that's the compromise. You choose which things that you want to prioritize. Do you want to play games on launch day or do you want to finish the games that you actually started? Which of the and, and while also being a consistent daily output. I chose to finish the games I start and also have each game have a daily video as opposed to being a weird, oh no, I'll get around to it when I feel like it, which is dangerous and how games get canceled anyway. Uh, like you can accidentally cancel games by being like, I don't know, I'll come back in a week or something. That's the that's the danger land that Supperland currently lives in, arguably. Sorry. We'll get to it, I swear. <laughs> but it's always dangerous to ever be like, ah, hiatus, I'll come back, I swear. Because uh, historically, that's the number one way that games get accidentally canceled on this channel. So yeah, I, I, I finish games, I play them, on, and I do daily videos, and I try to be very consistent about that stuff. And as a result, that's why if you're like, why aren't you playing Gears, Gears 5 the day it came out, or whatever game. Gears 5 is a weird example to use. <laughs> then that's usually why, is because I'm prioritizing finishing things. But my, for, for to some extent, me picking six slots was kind of arbitrary. It's just kind of a number I landed on, and but and, it's, and we've been doing it for like, a, like two or three years now, I want to say. It's been a little while, and that's been the experiment. But things have grown and changed and diverged over the last few years, and as a result, it's, I think it's time to update the system or at least move it around a little bit. One thing that has already kind of changed that I think is going to be permanent, which is that Let's Tries have become every other day. And that's to compensate for that, the fact that this is one hour. The uh, RPG slot. 
And you know what? RPGs have been kind of the backbone of this channel. I know that they're often not the most popular series. In fact, they're very frequently the least popular series on the entire channel. But I started doing RPGs, and I don't want to stop doing RPGs, and I really like playing RPGs in general. And people are always, here and there, an argument always gets thrown around, this particular series that I'm watching has to be a one-hour playthrough, whereas even though the other ones are all not, I want special treatment for this playthrough is like a thing people there's always that's a comment thread that always happens like at the at the height of its popularity every patreon series usually has come a comment thread that's like petitioning that like on god of war or celeste or whatever but it just happens constantly as people are saying like no this playthrough needs special treatment to be one hour long for reasons and the reasons are usually flaccid and nonsensical because ultimately the real reason is I like this playthrough and I want it to be longer, which I get. I don't, I'm not trying to be too mean about that. It's just, it's frustrating to see that comment thread always crop up. But the one thing that does really need one hour playthroughs is RPGs. These are hundreds of hours long and often very slow paced and so on. So like, if I'm going to make anything one hour long, it's not going to be God of War or whatever. It's going to be the monstrously long slow games. So it's been, ni it's been nice playing Pillars of Eternity in one hour episodes because it is just such a slow game that like one conversation might be half an hour long and stuff like that. And I think that's I think that's a good update. I like that update. I like that the RPG slot is one hour long and kind of a compensation for that was making Let's Tries every other day, but it's kind of not been enough. But I do still think I want to make Let's Tries permanently be an every other day thing. And I think and there's a few reasons for that. One, I'm playing a new game every single day. So like the, the way the, there's a few ways that manifests as being a problem. One is I need to scout and read emails and redeem codes for so many games just to keep up that. So that's extra work. But the main thing is selecting a game every day is, is some effort. Then you have to install and download said game. Then you have to troubleshoot said game into uh, working with OBS and everything, which is especially more likely to be a problem with indie games. So like there's a selection bias where the type of game I'm let's trying is more likely to be a game that will have trouble being recorded in the first place. So like there's a lot of extra time that goes into these episodes that is not visible to the record that to you guys as, um, as the end, the end viewer and all that. But let's try is one of the more time consuming things to do in general. And then on top of that, I'm just like, there's the mental bandwidth of like being ready to like go in and learn a new game and all that it's like whereas like a lot of these games you can get you get into a groove like oh we're gonna go back into god of war or back into pillars of eternity i'm getting comfortable with this game i can just kind of slip back into playing it whereas you kind of have to be like all right i'm ready i'm ready to do a let's try right now because you're going to be most likely playing a tutorial or trying to wildly adapt to playing a brand new game for this one stand alone episode and so on. So like there's a number of reasons why Let's Tries are a little harder to do. There's also the fact that I have to make a new thumbnail for every episode of every Let's Try because it's always a new video and all that. As opposed to like part 80 of Pillars of Eternity where I just make the number 80 now. And it's just kind of a faster process. So like there's a, there's a number of th reasons why the process of doing a 30 minute Let's Try might take me an hour or even longer. And so it kind of has always been a kind of bigger time sink. So making it every other day is useful. Uh, the fact that Patreon now selects most of them is pretty good for a number of reasons because uh, it kind of steps, it, it kind of helps me with the indecision par paralysis that happens too, where I'm like, I, there's this, this massive list. There's 700 games now. Like, frankly, like even without requesting them, I just keep getting codes in the mail from various indie developers of varying quality but some some of them are gems and a lot of them are garbage and it's just but it's a it's a deluge of codes coming in because you know uh indie development's gotten easier than ever not not e i'm not like trying to downplay it as being easy but it's more accessible than ever more people can get into it which means a lot more games are happening and steam has opened the floodgates to so many games being around and there's also itch.io and all that and uh i just i get I get like 50 emails a day at this point, and it's such a, it's such a deluge. So having, letting the Patreon people pick through the list themselves to pick one game every month across 15 people, that definitely has offloaded some of the mental bandwidth of just processing the complexity of this show. Because uh, I do feel like sometimes that the, uh, 
this is the kind of thing that somebody would offload to be somebody else's job if this if this was like a company is like you're the person who runs the email account and processes these hundreds of emails and then picks the which games would be best for this time slot and stuff like that so this kind of weird thing where i'm picking through the emails but then you guys kind of filter through it and all that is kind of helpful it also serves kind of an important role on my Patreon as uh, stability-wise of keeping this whole channel running. Is that I get this this big, scary twenty-five dollar tier that fifteen people are in, but it's kind of an exclusive club. So that the moment like some of them open up, other people are like, oh man, I gotta get gotta get in there, and like that whole like demand that goes there is kind of useful because twenty-five dollars times fifteen people, like that kind of raises the floor of my income. It, in, in effect, it didn't necessarily raise my income when I created that slot, but it, I think it created more stability because people come and go from every time slot, or not time slot, from every slot on the Patreon. But if people are pretty consistently filling all 15 of those slots and it's a $25 thing, that kind of is a, a chunk of my income that I can more reliably rely on like existing, which is obviously important for one's income in general. So I think the Let's Try uh, Patreon tier for uh, it kind of forms an important sort of backbone to my income itself. And uh, having people pick these these games for me for these time slots also just kind of makes that kind of part of my job a little easier, although it still is time consuming to like troubleshoot and make a thumbnail for every game. So, so I still think that every other day is an improvement to make that more manageable. Cause it's kind of arbitrary to make it daily in the first place. It was mostly just daily cause everything was daily, but uh, I think it's a more manageable workload at that form. That's not the most interesting thing. That That's the, that's the thing I got a little stuck on talking about for a little there. Uh, so the main thing is that I want to kill off one of these playthroughs and or not, not the time slot, I mean. And one of the biggest reasons for that is this guy down here, this big old chonker, this nightmare that is multiplayer. That's it's it badly circled, so you can't read anymore. Multiplayer has become a thing. It's kind of been a thing for years on this channel, but in particular, there's been a, a reinvention of schedules and whatnot where two things happened. One, I got really heavy into recording stuff with Bird. We tend to do it on, we t tend to have like a Wednesday and Thursday recording schedule where you, which you guys are aware of usually because you've seen the streams because we're usually streaming them. And so that's like a lot. That's two hours one night, two hours another night. But, uh, and I like that stuff and I want to keep it. But on, and on top of that, we have the Twitch cream group, which is uh, Durf, Andrew, Effie, Colonel RPG, uh, the Brian J and a few other people that come and go at times on top, on top of Bird. And those people might play anything from like Monster Hunter World to maybe World of Warcraft Classic soon, maybe? Uh, obviously tons of Overwatch, Jack's, Jackbox Party Pack, Viscera Cleanup Detail, uh, and so on and so forth. Like just, you know, all this multiplayer stuff's going on. And a lot of this stuff is an important part of gaming in general, so I don't want to ignore multiplayer. But as you see with this six game schedule here, this doesn't really implement multiplayer. There's an RPG slot, a Let's Try slot, a Patreon slot, a puzzle slot, and then there's these two neutral slots. And this is also like, these are all nice and refined. I have perfect control of this stuff, so that's the main thing I wanted to schedule when I made six slots in the first place, is I wanted to have stuff that I had full control over. Uh, cause you never knew, you never know, like mul multiplayer stuff might wax and wane from month to month based on the interest that all the different people have in doing multiplayer stuff at that time and where things are, where people are in life and so on. So I was a little afraid to make that a core part of the schedule in part because of the fact that it's unreliable to some extent. Uh, but at this point, I just, this, this year has been so multiplayer heavy but it's been a, it's been in this weird thing that's where it's additional to the main schedule, and that's been kind of a problem because it's been increasing my hours and being a problem. But but it's, but it's also in a gray area where like it's increasing my hours, but at the same time my multiplayer content is more recreational even for me and more hobby like for me than like the main job part of my main schedule. So like it's been kind of passable, but at the same time it's been like a strain on the schedule and it's been time consuming. But I also don't want to say no to it because, frankly, like I really enjoy that stuff and it helps maintain my connections with a bunch of people. And it's also like maybe better for my mental health to stay to stick with that stuff. So like there's times where I find myself wanting to say no 
to doing these sessions because I'm just a little bit behind on this or that. And part of the reasons I'm behind on this or that is because of the fact that I keep doing the multiplayer stuff. But at the same time, like I really like the multiplayer stuff and I think it might be not great if I get stuck in my let's play workload whole and I'm saying no to these like more social aspects of this whole gaming thing as a result of that. And also you guys seem to like the multiplayer content. Obviously I can't speak for all of you, it's all over the place, but at the very least, the average multiplayer content tends to be outperforming one, like at least two of the main six slots view wise. So like this is at this point, like it's been, I, I think that it's been thoroughly part of the channel lately enough that you could reliably call it like a core aspect of the schedule. And so I think I should treat it that way and internalize it that way. So that's what's, to some extent, that's what's truly happening is that what's going to happen is when judgment ends, I'm going to be like, die, judgment, dead, dead, goodbye, four, four o'clock time slot. And I'm going to kill the shit out of it. But what's actually going to happen is that that's just going to be the multiplayer time slot is that essentially this was supposed to be a six slot schedule and accidentally became this nightmare thing that has multiplayer on it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill one of these slots to compensate for the fact that multiplayer has accidentally become a seventh and sometimes eighth slot. And so we're going to switch back to having more close to the original number of scheduled slots. There's a few reasons why I'm not psyched about doing this because uh, there's the issue of uh, it's just less coverage. It's one of my neutral slots is going to be gone. That makes this that makes this 2 p.m. slot with Monster Hunter my only remaining neutral slot. But like at the same time, I value why the other slots exist because I always want to be playing an RPG and I want Let's Tries to be going and Patreon is my income. And also the, the the Patreon slot always does very well because it's the voice of the people, whatever the, it's the weird, whatever demographic undercurrent interest thing is like you guys really want Bioshock or God of War or Celeste. And I'm like, OK, cool. Like, it's actually really good for the channel in general, this Patreon slot, because it's often what you guys secretly really want. And it's often hard for me to fully know that. So it's it, this is good for the channel, good viewership. And also, I generally quite like playing the games that gets picked by it. So that's good. And I also like puzzle is obviously a core aspect of this channel. So like I want to keep Patreon, Let's Try RPG and puzzle going. So I'll just have to deal with the fact that there's only one neutral slot. That's a true wild card where I can pick anything to go there. Uh, so that's that's but that's one thing where I'm not totally psyched about downsizing. But at the same time, this is technically a neutral slot, the multiplayer slot. It's just the multiplayer neutral slot, I guess, where anything could happen there at any time. No Man's Sky, Overwatch, whatever, Jackbox, let's do this. Uh, the other reason why I'm not psyched about downsizing is that obviously there's the demand of the fact that we're going into the holiday season, and there and there's a, but there's there's two conflicting conf, uh, there's two conflicting demands of the holiday season, and that's part of the reason why I'm downsizing and part of the reason why I don't want to downsize. One, holiday season's rolling up, and we have a lot of things going up. Like this, October is when Halloween happens. November is when. Thanksgiving happens, uh, December is when Christmas happens, and when you have your family divorced and spread across the uh, state, and also your friends scattered across the state when everyone moves after college, and also everyone's in different places in their lives and so on, uh, I find myself celebrating Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas multiple times like especially sometimes especially halloween where like some of these things might get celebrated two to four times in, in, when I, as i rotate through different groups and meet up with different people and that's a good it's a good time that's a good normal part of the year for for normal people and all that uh and that's fine but it's a stressor on my schedule uh, of course it's a and i and it's it's rough to be like oh god i gotta keep up with this recording schedule but also be a human with all these social engagements that are happening right now that I have to travel for because I live in California and everything is far away all the time. Nothing is close ever in this state. So there's a lot of travel time. And like, if you, if you, if you do one of these things, it's not like, Oh, I got to just do my work schedule in the morning and then go off in the evening to have fun. It's like, no, I got to, my day is getting to and from the thing and doing the thing. Cause that's the reality of living in California. Uh, so like that, so like the, that's the pressure is that 
once you're dealing with this time of year, the pressure is to downsize the schedule to de- be able to deal with the fact that you have so much going on in your life and all that. But then you have the conflicting other thing, which is that I'm a video game covering channel. So, of course, there's the part of you that's, that wants to cover as many games as possible because it's the holiday season, which horrifyingly the holiday season of video games is like four months of the year it's so much of the year and it's like it's time for crunch you guys we got to cover all these games like this is a great example of that is like here's the fucking poll i did on patreon where it's like look at all these games coming up ai somnium files ancestors of the humankind odyssey uh, astral chain blasphemous bloodstain code vein control death stranding decay of logos doom eternal greedfall indivisible links awakening luigi's mansion 3 metal wolf chaos xd uh, Monster Hunter World, Iceborne, Outer Worlds, not to be confused with Outer Wilds, Phoenix Point, Pokemon Masters, Pokemon Sword and Shield, Remnant from the Ashes, Rethink 3, Je- Jedi, Star Wars, Fallen Order, blah, 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 Surge 2, and like already so many games I've already, th- like, I've already realized there's mo- multiple games that I just forgot to put on this list because like I'm currently playing a puzzle game called The Sojourn that I forgot to even include on this list. Uh, there's the upcoming Disco Elysium, which is a cool looking, uh, CRPG that's coming out. And it's like, I I can't, it's like, obviously there's a massive nightmare deluge of fucking billion games. And like, as a, oops, I accidentally voted in it. (laughs) And as a let's player, like I'm trying to figure out what to cover and like all that. So like, obviously as this nightmare flood of games comes out, like, I, I will inherently want to try to just grab as many of them as I can to please myself and you guys. Because, like, you guys want to see these games covered. And also, I want to play these games. That's why they're on the poll in the first place. Is because I'm like, yeah, I want to play those games. But it's just, no one man can cover all this shit. It's impossible. That's just the reality of it. So I just have to swallow my pride and just accept the fact, like, no, we're downsizing the schedule because that's the same thing to do because I'm overdue to do it because of the fact that I'm trying to do a one-hour RPG slot and all this multiplayer stuff's happening where I stream anywhere from two to five nights a week for two hours to five hours a night. And it's like, we just gotta... It's just not reasonable. So we'll cover what we want to cover, and I'm sure we'll probably spend this entire holiday season and maybe the entire next year with the Patreon slot choosing which of those games on that list to go back and cover because I missed them or something. And I'll try to cover what I can that you guys wanted. Like, in particular, I'm probably most likely to to cover Link's Awakening, Control, and and Death Stranding. I think those were like the three most voted for things on this poll. And maybe Luigi's Mansion or something. I know that Monster Hunter World wasn't the highest performer on the poll necessarily. It's that's that's for me. I really wanted to play Monster Hunter Iceborne. I really I really like Monster Hunter despite the many issues I have with other elements of it. But based on the results of this poll, we'll probably cover Death Stranding and Link's Awakening and Control by the end of the year. And uh, I'll try to play at least one game in October for Halloween. Like so I'll try to do Silent Hill three. And everything else is just a fucking grab bag. We'll see which of these, like, Souls likes I can get around to, or, like, between, like, uh, The Surge 2 and Code Vein and the other, many other ones that I've listed before. And we'll just generally see what happens on this channel. We'll just see. <laughs> no promises is always my answer whenever people say, what games are you going to play? I basically just made a mistake by saying, by kind of promising three Let's Plays in the future. I always try never to do that because, as you can see, this scheduling is so chaotic that uh, it's a mistake to even try to say that stuff. But that's the thing looking forward. I'm going to kill this slot because of multiplayer, but also because I want... RPG is to be a uh, continuous one hour thing, but that's been disruptive and I want to compensate for that. But you might be thinking it's going to take weeks for judgment to to end and you're probably and you're talking about being a little overwhelmed now, right? Well, then how are you going to compensate for that? Here's where the real thing is. I should have talked about this sooner. <laughs> uh, we're like 20 minutes into this thing. I talk for too long about everything. That's just a, that's just a, that's just me. <laughs> you guys know that you're stuck with me. So here's what's going to happen in the meantime. Until Judgment dies, here's the new schedule. We're going to take one day off every week from each playthrough. That's the main five playthroughs. And it's just a little thing to give me like a sort of like a micro weekend of time off a little bit or something. Or just a general compensator because things have been just taking too long. 
There's a few things with this. One is that I'm juggling the increased... The one... Like, Pillars of Eternity is an hour, if you think about it, of extra... Like, so it's an extra half an hour every day, right? But Let's Tries are every other day, which compensates a little bit by giving me a half an hour off every day, every other day, but that still is a, a half an hour net gain for Pillars of Eternity every other day. Like, it's not a one-to-one -one trade, cutting, cutting, do, making one thing every other day and making another thing double as much. That only leads to a 50% compensation for the change, change in that schedule and all that. But then we have additional issues of, like, like, we have a few different problems that have come up, which is that, uh... Let's make a new layer so I can draw on this thing. One is that fucking Judgment here is an asshole and has so many mini games and shit that like it tries to soak up so much time. And then also like it's not entirely Sojourn's case, but in many cases puzzle games have a tendency to take up a ton of time. Just because like in the case of like Rethink 3, for example, I was just like really getting stuck on puzzles, then editing it down to make the video more digestible. But I still spent hours doing that stuff that then became those half an hour videos. And then Monster Hunter has all this farming and other stuff where I'm spending a lot of time outside of its main schedule playing the game. So like uh, an issue is that just generally I've been I've been having trouble with uh how certain games just take more time than you guys see them take. There's to this part, there's parts of the year where every single game on my schedule is pretty smooth sailing. And so the fact that I put X number of videos out per day is much more manageable, but there's other parts of the year where it's harder to maintain that kind of schedule because of the fact that some of these games are stealthily taking up way more time than even the videos would make you lead to believe. And, and in the case of Monster Hunter World, those videos have been 45 minutes to an hour long sometimes, making it accidentally another bloated giant slot like this. So just generally, I'm just at a point where I'm going off to like Halloween related social engagements. I went off to like a I was I was in a corn maze yesterday, <laughs> like just spending some out some time outside and doing other things and having a lot of other conflicting plans. While also my schedule is actually being like, yo, play Mahjong over and over again until you win Watame off camera. So you can just continue with this goddamn playthrough. Uh, there's been so many moments like that and or farming for an armor set and stuff like that. That and also like all of these fairly chaotic schedules of multiplayer thing going on and then of course don't forget that there's also like the q and a is floating off there in the corner where i do a weekly patreon q and a there's just been enough things on my schedule that i've realized that the st sticking strictly with the six slots has just been a mistake and so it's time to downsize so i'm going to downsize immediately and then i'm going to have do five fewer videos per week for the foreseeable future by having this staggered uh no video day so there will be no pillars of eternity video on monday no god of war video on tuesday no monster hunter world uh, monster hunter video on wednesday no sojourn video on thursday and no judgment video on friday and that's going to loop until judgment is gone and then you can stop trying to think about this weird schedule that's confusing and harder to remember because that'll go away and they'll all go back to being daily videos but then judgment will be gone uh this this, this 4 p.m single player slot will be gone i'll probably move multiplayer forward to to airing at that time instead and multiplayer is just kind of a variable thing it's just based on how much back backlog I have. It's intended to be a one a singular time slot, but the fact that sometimes we just get a, we just sometimes we just do a lot of it, and and it's fun to do. Sometimes I'll be like, okay, I have like dozens and dozens of backlogged videos, so, so that's what leads to me sometimes uploading them to, uh, twice a day. And at any point, I might flex back down and back up between being one or two videos a day, but. The main thing is to downsize the main schedule to compensate for the many changes that have happened in my schedule since I originally did the six schedule, six video schedule idea. That's the ba basic idea. Hope you guys enjoyed half an hour of horrible rambling about my schedule and you get what's going on and you've become informed and all that. And hopefully this all makes sense. But yeah, just... Uh, if if you don't care, the general consensus is just we're going to keep moving forward. I'm just going to keep making videos and nothing fundamentally is changing. 
But if you're the type of person who understands the basic schedule of things and wants to know what's going on, then uh, this is the ongoing change to this stuff. If anything, I just wanted to get this out in public and let people process it who care about this stuff so I can stop thinking about it. Because I've gotten into a lot of like brain loops of me thinking about the complexities of this thing. And I've had to work myself up to, the, uh, to being willing to compromise and actually make this change. Uh, because it's just, yeah, I've known, I've kind of known that it needs to happen, but simultaneously been unwilling to deal with doing it. And part of it is just the fe the opportunity cost of knowing that like, ah, if I, if I work less, I will cover fewer games during this holiday season. And I don't want to let people down or myself down. Cause I also want to play those games, but it's just been, it's just been too much. <laughs> There's been, I've been on the verge of like, ah, and well, now I'm hyping it up. I'm not having like a mental breakdown or anything. It's not like a nightmare. Like, oh my God, I'm dying. But I'm like, uh, I've had a few days where it's like, I, I put hours in today and I realize I'm only just keeping up with, uh, the status quo of what I need to do on a day and not making net positive or in some cases making net negative, even though I put a lot of hours in and I'm like, that's okay. We need to, <laughs> something needs to change. And the the only ways to change that would be either not play any of the time consuming games and just be like fuck off if you if you require outside work to do the playthrough like Iceborne, or to say no to multiplayer stuff, or to do what I'm doing, which is to downsize a little bit in order to compensate for the more time consuming things because that's just the reality of the logistics. That's the, this is all a big boring video about the concept of logistics and opportunity cost. Hooray. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching like always, guys, and I'll see you next time. Patreon.com slash SebastianSP. <laughs>